Get your ancient fertility totems ready, we have the latest episode of American Horror Stories, and I have to say, this was my favorite one so far. In this video, we'll be breaking down episode 5, Ball, and all the easter eggs and connections to the greater AHS universe. So make sure your baby isn't being collected by a demon, and hit that like and subscribe button, I come out with AHS videos every week. Episode 5 centers around AHS alum, Billy Lord's character, Liv Whitley. Billy has been a regular in American Horror Story, first appearing in Season 7's Cult, and then in 8's Apocalypse, and 1984. In this episode, she and her husband Matt are doing everything possible to get pregnant, including in vitro fertilization, which is why the beginning of the episode starts at a fertility clinic. But on their way out, a helpful assistant pulls Liv aside and gives her an ancient fertility totem, because, you know, that's totally normal. Some of you may also have noticed how she remarks on Liv's husband being hot. Not the most professional thing to say if you want to keep your job, but we'll later find out Bernadette, the assistant here, is secretly seeing Matt, but more on that in a bit. The assistant says that if you place the totem underneath the bed during intimacy, you'll stand a better chance of getting pregnant, and at this point, Liv is willing to try anything. She puts it under the bed, and we see the edges of the frame blur, which has been a technique used in previous AHS seasons to signify magic. Liv inherited this giant mansion from her granddad, which becomes a pivotal plot point later on, and as she makes love with her husband atop the freaky demon totem, we fast forward 16 months to Liv and her new baby boy, Aaron. The totem has seemingly worked, but Liv, who wanted nothing more than to have a child, has completely changed. She's irritable and is on the edge of tossing the baby in a dumpster. Such a fucking mistake! Later, Liv will find that that totem is still under her bed. I guess they don't vacuum under there. This time, however, the totem has changed, and instead of throwing it out, she places it in a shoebox, as you do. Liv confides in Matt that all she's ever wanted was a baby, but now she feels like she's a horrible mother. He recommends seeing Dr. Berger, who specializes in hormone and postpartum disorders. And maybe that's not so bad of an idea, as later that night, she believes she sees a demon overlooking her kid. After a few sessions with Dr. Berger, Liv is feeling pretty good. She makes her husband coffee, is excited for his recurring role on NCIS, and things are finally looking up. That is until she finds a new demon totem, this one with wings and horns, in her baby's crib. So of course she instantly blames the maid for putting it there, who, upon seeing the totem, does the sign of the cross and quits. This is also a good time to mention the production design in the episode, which I absolutely loved. Although it's sparse, almost the entire episode is decorated in black and white tones, symbolizing the dichotomy between good and evil. Liv thinks she hears noises coming from the vent, so like any good girl in a horror movie, she goes to investigate, finding the entire basement has been ripped apart, and when she tells this to her husband, he merely dismisses it as the work of raccoons. Liv does some research into this ancient Sumerian fertility totem, finding it's the demon Baal, said to be one of the principal kings of hell. She even does some audio work on the baby monitor recordings, increasing the speed to hear a voice that says, I want him. Matt, concerned for his wife, brings over Dr. Berger, who thinks Liv might be overstressed, suffering from sleep deprivation and pareidolia, when the mind starts seeing patterns and tries to make connections. The I Want Him audio recording would be an example of audio pareidolia, like in 1969 when a Detroit DJ started a hoax by claiming that if you play the Beatles song Revolution 9 backwards, you can hear the phrase Paul is dead. Dr. Berger prescribes Liv some Zoloft, and she starts feeling a bit better, enough so to play a game of Ouija with Matt's college friends. Now, one of these friends, Rory, has actually been in a previous season of American Horror Story. The actor Chad James Buchanan played Stu in season 8's Apocalypse. Oh, the stew is of course, things don't go according to plan when the Ouija board spells out the phrase, he is mine. Liv lashes out, throwing the board into the fire, and she gets in a huge argument with Matt, who says he's had enough of her outbursts. I should also mention I enjoyed Ball's appearance coinciding with Storms, since Ball is also known to be the god of storms. So Liv goes back to Bernadette, the assistant she got that totem from, and wants answers. Bernadette said she used to be a drug addict, and only when she turned to paganism was she healed of her addiction. Her parents 
parents also dabbled in the sacred arts and her places furnished in ancient grimoires and even a monkey paw. Bernadette says that Liv must conduct a ritual using a special consecrated blade in order to banish the demon from her home. And it just so happens Matt is on a night shoot that evening, so she'll have the whole place to herself for this ritual. Liv conducts the ceremony, speaking in Latin and cutting her hand to let the blood flow on the totem when fog starts to emanate around her. It seems like the ritual is working until she hears her baby scream, she turns around and accidentally stabs Matt in the chest. We fast forward two weeks where Liv has voluntarily put herself into a mental asylum. She tells Matt that she won't come home until she knows she's safe. It's here we see the big twist of the episode. Matt has been seeing Bernadette and this has all been a ploy between him and his friends to get Liv's money. Matt says once his lawyers get through with Liv, she'll be committed indefinitely. Those sounds of the demon? Planted speakers. The fog machine? Set up by Matt's friend. And Ball himself? Well, that's Rory doing some acting in a demon getup. Matt even switched Liv's medication with a psychoactive cocktail and had the baby monitor purposely glitch. Matt is congratulated with a BJ and if you're keeping count this season, that's number four. The gang celebrates their devious plan knowing that once the situation is all settled, they'll be set for life and Matt plans on shipping his son out to a boarding school forever. But suddenly a fog creeps in and demonic noises emanate throughout the house, which is impossible since they disabled all the speakers and the fog machine. The real bald demon appears and brutally massacres all the college friends except for Matt, who is taken into police custody and framed for the murders of his friends. Liv visits Matt in jail where we learn Liv tried Bernadette's banishing spell which actually turned out to be a real summoning spell. Ball came to life and viciously murdered Matt's friends. While Matt was being interrogated for their murders, he told the cops the real story of wanting Liv's money so you can see Liv isn't too pleased with Matt. He warns her not to go back into the house, but she does so anyway. Ball is under her control, wanting to be released, and she says she will release him on one condition. She give him another baby. And while this episode does center around a demon, the real demon is actually that of gaslighting, a husband who makes her wife think she's gone crazy when it was all an elaborate ruse. It really calls into question who the real demon was in this episode. If you shut out all the glaring plot holes, like how Matt said he didn't want to get Liv pregnant, but Bernadette gave Liv a fertility totem, I think this was the best American Horror Stories episode so far. It had twists, the pacing felt better, and the overall tone combined with production design made this a standout. As far as I know, there are only two more episodes left until HS Double Feature comes out, which I hope to cover every episode of. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you thought of Ball in the comments below. And as always, like, subscribe, and for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.